Okay. A warm uh, thank you to our esteemed panel. as a very good high-level panel. Thank you very much, and thank you, Jean, for chairing that. Thank you for meeting time as well, because we're going to uh, innovate as well. Welcome, everybody, to the final of Miss Geek Ghana. This competition for between 13 and 25-year-old young ladies will announce the winner today. They identify any problem. It doesn't matter what sector. And they come up with an IT, a technology-based solution to that problem. And the winner will go forward to Miss Geek Africa, which will take place in uh, uh, Guinea-Conakry next year. So there will be a voting system. I'm going to quickly run through the schedule. Uh, so please, uh, if you go online, uh, that's the, the, the network, the Vodafone network, and that's the password. And uh, you'll be, what will happen is I'll bring the judges and the chair. I must say this has been uh, generously, generously supported by Canon. And Teo Omodoya from Canon will be uh, chairing this session. And I'll bring the judges to the uh, I'll bring the judges to the to the stage. Have we got that uh, right? So, and. Um, after that, Teo will take over and will introduce the 10 young ladies who will make short presentations. You, the audience, uh, you don't know it yet, but we're going to direct you on your phones, your devices, to a site which has all of the 10 young ladies listed, and you will choose your favourite five. Not in any order, just your favourite five from what you've heard, uh, based on what you believe is the best solution. So, uh, once those five, all five, the, the, these numbers six to ten will be given prizes, and the judges will then, from those final five, decide fourth and fifth, third, second, and the winner. And just to let you know, our organisation, we did this in Oman uh, in September for uh, young Arab innovators, it, it flows naturally. Uh, somehow we make it all work together. It's a good bit of entertainment, but it's also a great bit of inspiration. And uh, Ben, if you could make sure the timer clock is set for five minutes for all, the, um, uh, for all the presenters. So without much further ado, because we've got to get this all done by lunch, uh, I'm going to introduce the chair of the panel, which is uh, Omoteo. Omoria, please give her a warm welcome, who is uh, the manager for the region, for Ghana and Nigeria, for Canon. And uh, Teo is going to be joined, the panel of judges who are going to watch the presentations, are uh, Dr. Ethel Asante Antwi, who is from the Ghana Technology University College, I believe. Uh, uh, Suanzi Dora Jameson, who is West Blue Consult, Miss Ivy Barley, from uh, the Chief Executive Officer from Developers in Vogue, and Miss Joanna Hartung, who is the Digital Transformation and Communication Officer from GIZ, GIZ, sorry, I almost went American there, uh, GIZ, the German Development Agency, as many of you know. So, let's uh, see how this all works out, Teo. And uh, I'm going to hand over to you to have some fun and also be productive. Take care. Honorable ministers, government dignitaries, fellow delegates, and members of the press, I'm particularly proud and happy to be here with you today to present the first edition in Ghana of the Miss Geek Ghana. Indeed, this competition is particularly important because it covers two themes that are close to our hearts as, at Canon, namely supporting young people and uh, helping Africa countries to develop. By awarding a prize today, 
to a young girl between age 13 and 25 for putting in place an application to address an economic and or social issue in Ghana. We are contributing to the youth development and the ambition of the younger generation. By 2065, Ghana's population would have doubled more than 60 million. The share of young people is very high. The median age is 20.9 years, and below age 24 is 56.4% of the active population. Ghana, like many countries on the African continent, must therefore rely and capitalize on this young and dynamic population, offering them opportunities for local success and in order to enable the sustainable development of this wonderful country. Indeed, by investing in youth, creating tangible career development opportunities and promoting new technologies that enable innovative solutions, we all aim to proactively create a dynamic and sustainable growth ecosystem in Ghana. Young people are the future of the country, and it's up to all of us, dynamic actors in Africa, each at our own level, to give them the necessary means to help them build their future. The support and accompaniment of the young girls in particular in their projects are important success factors to encourage them and help them build communities to adapt to the changing need, increase productivity and increase remuneration level. This initiative is in line with the government's and in particular the Ministry of Communications desire to strengthen gender equality and encourage girls to embrace new technology. Women are increasingly involved in working life on the continent. For example, today, the proportion of women entrepreneurs on the continent is unprecedented. 25% of the startups in Africa are founded by or run by women, compared to the 17% in the United States. I sincerely hope that this competition will inspire all young girls to dare and embark on ever more innovative STEM projects that we help Ghana to continue to make a meaningful impact on innovation and gender equality. And I'm particularly going to celebrate these girls who are breaking the glass ceiling, I must say, who are going to be role models to other girls and tell them that it's possible to do it, and who are going to represent Ghana and even the world at large. So a lot of people, a lot of other young girls are going to look up to these ones. And so we must all celebrate them and really give them a round of applause for taking this challenge. Please celebrate these girls. Celebrate them. Celebrate them. I tell you. It's, um, you know, the STEM career, it's not always the familiar, you know, it's not the popular, you know, terrain for, for, for female. So when you see the ones who are ready to take the challenge, I, trust me, it's a bold step. And we're so proud of you. And um, I must say that... Um, no matter what it is today, or no matter who becomes the Miss Gig Ghana, all of you are winners. All of you should be proud of yourself. All of you should stand with your heads up high and say, yes, I can do this, and I'm doing it. So we are happy for you, and we celebrate you. Thank you so much. Just to give you um, like a background of um, the Miss Gig Ghana. So the girls in ICT Rwanda um, and Smart Africa partnered to organize the Miss Gig um, Africa competition held at the Annual Transform Africa Summit. And the purpose was to um, promote STEM among girls. So for the past three years, the girls across the continent submit applications of technology-based solution and solving problems and specific problems affecting their community. The 29th edition of the competition won by Josephine Uwase, a 19-year-old from Congo DRC, had finalists from eight countries, including Senegal, Ghana, Rwanda, Benin, Kenya, Mauritania, and Mali. And um, before I start to call the girls, who are going to be presenting to us in five minutes each about their innovation, what they've come up with, I will just read this quick letter from the president of Girls in ICT Rwanda, where the old Miss Geek concept also started from. So um, just to read in brief, it goes... On behalf of girls in ICT Rwanda, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Ms. Gig Ghana to the Ms. Gig Africa community. 
were excited to have this great initiative begin in Ghana and to grow awareness and a critical mass of women in science, technology, engineering, and maths in Ghana and in Africa. We're humbled and honored that you have chosen to embark on this journey with us. And thank you for your commitment towards Miss Gig Africa. Miss Gig Africa is organized by girls in ICT Rwanda in partnership with Smart Africa, as well as, well as the government of Rwanda particularly the Ministry of ICT, Ministry of Youth and Infoto Foundation. The competition is designed for young ladies in high school, tertiary institution, university and TVET to think critically and design technology-based solution to challenges facing Africans today. We traverse the country, visiting the schools, use social media to spread the word on the competition through our network. Our goal is to reach as many young girls as possible. After six years of hosting the finale in Rwanda, the next year, Miss Geek Africa 2020 final will take place in Guinea. Our finalists from each participating country will automatically have a spot to compete at the Miss Geek 2020 final. The winner of the upcoming Miss Geek Ghana will be among the 10 other students at the competition. The different countries' representative will then go through a long week of training to prepare them for the final pitches before the judges. We expect every country to uphold the same standard and fairness in selecting their participant who will represent them at the final in 2020. Girls in ICT Rwanda is ready to support you to make Miss Gig Ghana a success and ensure that they participate in the annual Miss Gig Africa. We look forward to welcoming Ms. Gig Ghana to the Ms. Gig Africa next year. Sincerely, Lucy Mbazi, President Girls in ICT Rwanda. So right now, um, we are going to be saying something very interesting, and I want each and every one of us to pay attention because we all are going to be part of you know, the judges who are going to determine um, the winner of the Ms. Gig. And of course, I want to use this opportunity also to encourage and to urge even the private sector to support the ministry to be part of this initiative and let us celebrate our girls and our women in our country. Thank you very much. So this is um, the next part now is to invite the girls one after the other. Each girl has um, five minutes. So I'm just going to start with the first girl who will be presenting our project. It is my honor and my pleasure to invite Abigail Edie York for our presentation. Please, a round of applause for her. Thank you. Good morning, ministers' presence, dignitaries. Panel of judges, ladies and gentlemen, Abigail York is my name, 23 years of age. In the year 2003, 30th November, my grandma lost 4,000 plus of poultry birds due to pests and parasites attacking the birds at home. Unfortunately, she couldn't live to see have okay. These pests and parasites are such as tick, lens, flies, armyworms, catworms. These are often major problems facing the commercial poultry operations. That is why I have come up with my project, which is the smart insecticide bulb. The smart insecticide bulb is designed. Is designed. It's designed to attract pests and parasites, at the same time, destroy them from the farm. It is being programmed with an Arduino coding. Arduino coding is a software that is used to help to, to, to dissolve, develop a solution. In a journey with this project, I have realized that, a journey with this project, I have come up with a solution, which is the Smart Insecticide Bob. The Smart Insecticide Bob actually helps in pest management strategy. Also, the use of garlic fuse bob. 
The use of garlic fuse bulb actually comes with a bulb, which will assist in destroying and killing the pests and parasites from the farms. And also, a smart way of using the app. The smart way of using the app in a sense that I have developed the app on my phone for those who, who have two or more things at hand doing, and they are not at home to own this, this bulb to prevent the pests and parasites attacking their poultries or crops. That is why I have the on and off switch button on my phone. It's wherever you are in the part of the country, just to just turn it on. It will go off, it will come on for you. And our brothers and sisters who are in the rural areas, no need to worry at all whether you have electricity or not. It uses solar panel as well. And one interesting part about this app is that it does not consume at all. Its usage is 150 kilobytes per month. And also, do you know that I don't have any competitor in the country? What if I told you that agriculture is a backbone of this country? And if you allow the backbone to be destroyed by this pest and parasite, well, we will not be left with anything. That is why my insecticide bulb is here to help you. That takes me to my impact. My impact is SDG 1, which says no, no poverty. SDG 2, which says zero hunger. It aims that everywhere, everyone needs to have a good food. SDG 8, which says decent work and economic growth. My sales targets, my sales targets are restaurants, agricultural merchants, domestic users, etc. And also, my revenue is 5,000 5, customers across the country. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abigail. Please, um, well done. Thank you so much. And um, thank you for also keeping the time. I think that's very amazing and very impressive of you. And I hope that we are able to understand this concept and this innovation that you have come up with. So, Abigail, thank you so much. I would probably... Yes, you can, please. Are you on the show? You can, please. You still have time, so if you want to do one minute to show, it's okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abigail. And um, so I think that is just to show you how intelligent and how innovative our girls are. So the next um, person I'm going to call right now is Angela Agbeke. Angela Agbeke, a round of applause for our place. Good afternoon, honorable ministers diplomats, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Agbeke Angela, and I present to you the D-Lab. The D-Lab is basically a computer laboratory on wheels. Do you know that business is not all about working hard, but also working smart? And IT helps you to work smart. Growing up with a mom who is a petty trader who has no knowledge about how to use the basic digital tools to promote her business, I came up with a social media presence and taught her how to even use this, even in my absence in the local dialect. With this, I came up with a survey on market women like my mom. And per my analysis, I realized that about 70% of our market women have no knowledge about how to use digital app, to have no knowledge about how to use digital tools to promote their business. To promote their business. That's lack of digital literacy. And also, those who have knowledge about how to use the digital tools claim it's so expensive, and we all could attest to it that it's true. And the others feel like IT is a fault for just men, which I don't agree with. Per this analysis, I came up with a solution. That is the D-Van. It's a digital van, which is convenient, well-equipped, and very affordable. This D digital van will go all the way to the comfort of their workplace, the markets. 
and teach women how to use basic IT tools to promote their business in English and in our local dialect. My target is to teach 10 women per hour six times, six hours a day. That's basically 60 women per day, 300 per five working days, 1,200 per month, and roughly 14,400 per year, roughly. Is this not women empowerment? With this, with this, I'll go a long way to impact the society by achieving a sustainable development goal eight, which is decent work and economic growth. And also achieve our development, sustainable development goal one, which is eradication of poverty. Young ladies like myself and my co-contestants will be employed to teach women how to use basic IT tools to enhance and improve their business. To improve their business. We will be paid salary, young girls only, and this will go a long way to empower women. Thank you. Before I leave, I would like us to keep in mind that IT is rapidly taking over the world, and Africa shouldn't be left behind, including Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Angela. Thank you very much. A round of applause for our place. Digital literacy. That was the topic of our project. So right about now, um, I'll call on Audrey Boateng for our presentation. Please clap for Audrey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good afternoon once again. My name is Audrey Boatin and I'm 16 years of age. My presentation is based on the marketing of farm produce using crop app. As we can, as we can all see here, this farmer is not happy because he couldn't sell his farm produce after a bumper harvest. So allow me to introduce to you my solution. And this solution is known as crop app. Crop app is an agri-based e-commerce app that helps farmers to be able to sell their produce to prospective buyers even before and after harvest. It has various sessions which include the planting day session whereby the farmer will have to enter the date of planting so that the countdown will start and automatically send notification to anyone who uses the app. It has a, a notification section. With the notification section, this will, is whereby an individual on the app will get a feedback and information of what's going on in the app. It also has an account section whereby payment transaction will be prominent and the one among them is mobile money, bank transfers and checks for farmers to choose from at different levels. Lastly, it has a rating and review section. With the rating and review section, farmers will be able to know Buyers will be able to know farmers which has high ratings, and the one with high ratings will get enough customers and will gain more profit. But the one with low ratings will not get enough customers, so this will help him to, this will encourage him to work more so that he'll be able to get a high rating for him to get enough profit. And also, again, Ghana in 2017 lost over $700,000 to post harvest losses. And between 40% to 50% of crops produced are lost before they get to the market. This is why we have not been able to achieve the SDG goal now number eight, decent work in economic growth. So if you embark on, if you use this app, it's going to help you to be able to market your produce in making the farmers, especially those in the rural areas, to become rich and reduce poverty in the country. So I would like to encourage all people here to be able to use this app and to help them to market the app produce to prospective buyers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Audrey. And thank you for crop up. All right. <laughs> so um, I think it's getting really interesting and um, I'm particularly thrilled by the, you know, the innovation that these young girls are coming up with. So I'm going to call on the fourth presenter, and that is Freda Adu 
Amankwa. Round of applause for Freda, please. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Frida Eduamankwa, a product of Center for Social Innovation. Today, I'm here to talk about with, um, with you with the app Health Stats, which involves in food allergies and sensitivities and how the, our immune system can be hypersensitive. Do you know how hypersensitive your immune system can be? Do you know your allergy? Of course, most of us may know, but what about the people outside? They have no idea of what is really going on in their body. All they think is of it is medicine, medicine, when any reaction that occurs in their body. That is why I've come up with the, greatest, um, the brightest solution, which is the health startup. The health startup to help the person get the general ideology of how the immune system works and also give you the, how the effect of the allergy and how, a, how um, a hypersensitive your immune system can be. The health startup um, gives you articles, videos, survey and course section. The articles will give you the general information of how your allergy and how hypersensitive your immune system can be. And the videos will give you the visual understanding of the articles that you've read so that you get more knowledge on how your hyper, uh, hypersensitive your immune system can be. And you go to the survey, there will be a tons of questions on the survey to, for you to be able to come out whether you are allergic or non-allergic. After that, if you are found allergic, you go to the uh, course section to have the ability to meet a medical expert to know more about your allergy and how to treat the allergy. Then I go to my impact, which is reducing inequality between countries, which hit at the HG, HGD goal 10. Most of us think we are shy because our inferiority complex to interact with people outside and inside our country. So this help will give us the privilege to be able to meet the health experts and discuss our health problems with them. Also, it provides employment and increased productivity. I and my team will get employment from this. And also, people, instead of people staying in the house to, to, to Instead of people stay in the house to um, cure their diseases on allergy, why don't you provide them that app so that they will get a general understanding and how to treat the allergy before it even comes so that they can be able to go to work and increase the productivity of the country. And lastly, my impact is it increases um, good decision making at the health sector. Why am I saying that? Because it's the least talked about um, health sector problem. Um, the health sector will get more data to able to analyze and know how much of people who are suffering of allergy in the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I can um, imagine that the judges are, <laughs> the, 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 you know, the scoring is becoming like, okay, everybody seems to be doing a good job, right? What do you think? Great job. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much, Freda. Now, I'm going to call on Molly Essie Sutherland for our presentation. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Molly Sutherland from the Western region, 22 years of age, and I'm presenting on PRECTA application, which is basically a pregnancy diary application. Research by WHO indicates that in 2017, about 810 women died from maternal and childbirth later causes, resulting in 295,000 women dying globally. From this, Sub-Saharan Africa recorded about 196,000 of these deaths, which is over 50% of the maternal deaths recorded in 2017. In Ghana, there are lots of interventions, but Ghana's maternal mortality rate was said to be 319 per 100,000 live births. There are strategies such as the implementation of the health insurance scheme, which provides free healthcare 
to pregnant women from registration through to first ANC session through to delivery. We are also having um, provision of chase compounds in the various health facilities and or in the various communities so that the average Ghanaian in the rural area can get access to a healthcare worker. There are also increased ANC sections in the various health facilities and also um, increased health education about ANC sections in the various health facilities. But lack of clientele worker relationship, clients not knowing the importance of attending ANC services and problems with default tracing is pre preventing its impact in society. Practa app will be an online and offline application with voice navigation in both English and local languages, which would aid the illiterate and literate in society in the use of the app. We would educate pregnant women about major health issues regarding pregnancy, some changes that their body would undergo. We would also educate them about danger signs that they have to look for out for, so that in case those danger signs occur, they would just contact the nearest health facility to prevent any further mortalities. We we'll also educate them about their diet plan and we'll give them access to emergency contact numbers that they have to use in times of need when no one is available to help them. For the healthcare worker, Practa app will have a unique code given to every client that they come, they, they attend to. That code will get access to or will have all the necessary information that a healthcare worker can use in taking very good care of the client, thus providing quality health care to the client. We we'll also remind them about the various health, um, the various client that they are supposed to report to the facility in a particular day. Because once you come to a health facility, the health care worker knows when your next date of visit is. So we we'll remind them of the, the client that will come and those who also aid in the photo tracing because once a client doesn't come, they'll know that probably A or B didn't come to the facility this day. We'll also use the, for, um, the Ghana Health, um, Ghana Post address system and the GPS address system in locating the various defaulters in the communities for follow up to find out why they didn't come and what the problem might be. We also have options where medical history of the clients will be stored, which will aid in the referral process in times of need, that is, in case it's a serious, um, a serious, a serious problem, and the person needs a serious session, but that operation cannot be done in the in the baseline. Using the app, information will be sent to the next level of care, which they can use to um, the clients can the caregiver can use in future. The contact stakeholders uh, are the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, and health-based NGOs, which stand to reduce maternal mortality rates, and also provide good health and well-being for all. We would also reduce inequalities in the rural areas and also encourage development in those areas. We would also provide entrepreneurship and job creation for the youth. Thank you very much. Thank you, Molly. Well done. Um, our next... Um Girl who is coming to present our own solution is Najilau Dramundu Atta Abdul Karim. Salam alaikum. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Atta A.K. Najilau Dramundu, a filmmaker, and I'm here to present Sinplex. Film audience have over the years abandoned the use of DVDs in favor of streaming videos online. This is driven by their need for convenience, cheaper costs, and uh, need for a variety of content. And this has caused a decline in the sale of DVDs, which happens to be the major source of income for filmmakers in a country. This has, caused, this has affected the telling of the Ghanaian story because filmmakers don't make enough money to live on, survive on, and invest into the making of quality Ghanaian films. Because of this, I present to you Synplex. Solution is to develop a video on demand service, Synplex, which is a hybrid of YouTube and Netflix, where the proceeds of subscription goes back into the pocket of the filmmaker. This would enable them make money to invest into their art. For the filmmaker, Synplex is a solution to distribution which means it is very easy for them to upload their content onto the platform and get paid by the number of views from subscribed users. Synplex would give the film audience 
access to a variety of Ghanaian content, which will be dubbed and subtitled into the major local languages in Ghana. This means that the over 10 million internet users in Ghana would have access to all the films on Cineplex without language barrier. And Cineplex will create a platform for people to upload content in contest, contests, for people to vote. This means program organizers can organize film contests and upload their films onto the platform for the public to log on and vote. This would create a lot of traffic to Cineplex. And also, film stakeholders would get access to data from likes, comments, and ratings. And this would let us know which films in Ghana are doing well and which films, what people are saying about the films and what kind of content Ghanaians want to be seeing. Also, film, um, film, Simplex would create a platform for advertisers to advertise their products, of course, on the free mode and to reach out to the variety and um, the vast, uh, vast creatives on the platform for product placement deals. Simplex will generate revenue through our subscription package. So we have our one-time premiere package where, feel like you go to the cinema for premieres, you can have premiere sessions on Simplex. So you don't all have to convert to cinema and um, silver bed. As you know, in Ghana, we don't have enough TM cinemas in all the major regions. So everyone can watch the premiere on the same day on Simplex. And also, we would have our subscription packages to fit each um, user's uh, lifestyle. So you can have the one, one year subscription, six month subscription, two month subscription, one month subscription, one week subscription, one day subscription, and the pay as you go. So there's no excuse to not subscribe on Simplex. Simplex is aiming at creating a stable source of income for the filmmaker. This means that when the filmmaker makes film, they would, they would get profit from the film to survive on. And this will go a long way to reducing poverty. And also, also Simplex is seeking to create a space that encourages, protects, supports, and values the work of women in film and ensure that they receive equal pay with no discrimination. Simplex, the existence of Simplex will encourage the production of several Ghanaian films, which will create decent jobs across all industries because the film production set has the ability of employing thousands of people at a time. Finally, film is a major, so a major tool in the preserving, influencing, affir and affirming the social cultural belief of a people. And Simplex is here to encourage the production and patronage of Ghanaian films. Hence, make it very easy for Ghanaians to watch Ghana. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> now, that was good. Thank you very much. Um, we can have our own sim simplex, right? And just, you know, forget about Netflix, right? You, you think so too, right? I believe so. And um, that was a good presentation. Thank you so much. So please tell us when it's available so we can start to, you know, download the app and enjoy the Ghanaian movies. And um, one thing that I must say at this point is we've seen six um, girls come to present. And if you would agree with me, six different ideas, six different solutions. So it just also emphasizes how much we have in the mind of our youth and how much they can bring out if we give them the opportunity to do so. So we have four other contestants left who are going to come up with four more ideas and I am looking forward to seeing these ideas becoming a great means of um, economic growth for Ghana. So the next person I'm going to call now is Precious Apia. Please give Precious a round of applause. Good afternoon, honorables. Good afternoon, everyone here. My name is Precious Apia, and my proposal seems to throw more light on using technology to improve services that's been provided by transport agencies. Now, during my research, I identified a couple of challenges that has been with the current system for years now. And the first point that I identified is congestion. 
As in, in order to get a ticket to a destination, you need to, you need to join a very long queue before you get access to a ticket. And it's very resource consuming. For example, if you need to get to a particular place within a particular time, you, you realize if you don't get access to a ticket at one place, you start moving from one place to another, one place to another, in order to get a ticket to your, your destination at the appointed time, which is resource consuming. You waste a lot of money, you waste a lot, a lot of time, and then you waste a lot of energy as well. And it's unsafe and insecure in a sense that, one, you moving from your house at very early hours to get to the bus terminal to get, to get a ticket is very unsafe and you put yourself at risk. And then two, it's unsafe because the drivers are not monitored when it comes to speed. So they tend to sometimes move at speeds, speeds that's very bad. And it's, it's insecure in the sense that Sometimes too, there are no records kept on customers. So you realize in case of emergencies, when we want to track back the customer to their family members, there are so many problems and we can't identify them. So I came up with, looking at these problems, I came up with a proposed solution. I named it Terminal 3, which is a web-based mobile app that seems to provide services smartly by one, booking management. And when it comes to the booking management, I talk about being able to book your tickets online, reschedule your trip, or even cancel your trip if the need be. And then again, if you are challenged, as in physically challenged, or you have any health issue, you would be able to state it whilst booking a ticket so that provisions will be made available for such a person. And then agency and customer interaction platform. With the agency and customer inter interaction platform, it seeks, it seeks to talk about the agencies being able to communicate, let's say, service provision changes, and then the customers also being able to report problems or maybe make recommendations with the services that's been provided to them. And then with my main thing when it comes to Terminal 3, which is the bus tracking. With the bus tracking, it helps agencies to be able to know where and when their buses will be available so that they make the next booking package for their customers. And then again, it helps agencies as well as the government to track, to to, as well as the government, to know the speed at which drivers, drivers move. Just recently, last week, when I was coming to Accra, during the news, it was recorded by the AMA that there were 1,816 accidents recorded only in Accra, with, with majority of them as a result of overspeeding. So if there is an app that can help us, apart from broadcasting through adverts to stop overspeeding, then, I mean, it's going to help us reduce road accidents. Okay, with the impact and goals, this smart system is aimed at increasing one, convenience. At the comfort of your home, you'd be able to book a ticket anywhere, including our students, without necessarily going there to sleep at bus terminal, our women who are traders, without having to be there early more without having to be there at all hours in order to get tickets. And it's very safe and secure. You we get to keep your records, you get to be on a bus where the speed is being monitored, women who are vendoring, children who are vendoring by the roadside will, will be also comfortable knowing that the speed of the drivers on the road are being checked. And it increases productivity. Instead of moving from places to places in order to get a ticket, you can use that time to do something pro productive. And now with the bus agencies too, you know that now your services have been improved by, uh, by providing a good service to your customers, and this provide uh, sorry this increases productivity, which serves to help us achieve SDG A's when it comes to. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you for coming up with Terminal Three. Right, well done. Thank you, Precious. So right now uh, we have Rebecca Gabozo. Well done, Rick. Please, a round of applause for Rebecca as she comes up. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Rebecca. I'm Rebecca. Did you know that your life, that of your family, and your property is at risk whenever you hire the wrong handyman, such as a carpenter, electrician? In December 2017, my dad hired a carpenter to chain the net of the doors and windows at home. He stepped out and came back and was very angry. He was greatly dissatisfied with the quality and also quantity of work that the artisan did. 
I asked my dad, why does he keep using these artisans who keep giving him no value for his money? And he said, they are the ones he knew and also he has used. I did a market research and realized that indeed people have this same issue and similar ones. Your house could get burnt within minutes just because of an electrician. You could sleep or your child could sleep just because of a plumbing issue that wasn't fixed. Or you could lose that important and big business deal just because your company facility isn't in good shape. That is why I find rapidly is here. That is why I find rapidly is here. Find rapidly is here to provide you with a one-stop shop to find security verified and also competent handymen for all your job requests at any time. We provide you, we also provide training opportunities, technical training opportunities for women who want to enter into male dominated vocational areas such as plumbing, carpentry, painting. We are also, and also give them market access. We are also giving these same opportunities to people with disabilities, such as the blind, the um, mobility impaired, and many others. And we, we are doing this to incorporate them into the society and also give them employment. Find Rapidly also provides you with a web and mobile platform that allows you to request for our service, to also rate our handymen, to um, view their, their profiles, and so many others. We are not leaving the non-smartphone users out. We are also giving you a USSD option where you can request for our handyman and do other stuff. We are also um, creating, making your home a smart one. We are giving IoT devices such as water leakage sensors, voltage sensors, gas leakage sensors, and you can monitor your home right from our mobile app. You don't have to be home physically. We are also using AI for data analytics and also um, efficiency of our, to improve the efficiency of our platform over time. Our, web, our, our platform is very inclusive. Um, persons with disabilities can use our platform with ease. The blind, the deaf, the dumb, the aged, and so many others, they can use our platform with so much ease. Find Rapidly is here to create jobs. We are giving our professionals a larger market outside their network, therefore creating jobs. We are also including persons with disability and also the marginalized, the women. Usually they go into clinic, but no, we want to expose them into this field because we know that they can also make it. Thereby, we are drastically reducing poverty. We are also reducing inequality. We are also um, decreasing, we are also, um, decreasing um, hunger. We are also decreasing hunger. Find Rapidly is here to save your life, to save your business, to save your family, and to save your property. Um, join Find Rapidly now. Find Rapidly. Your handyman is just a click and a minute away. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
So this is how the voice recognition system works. The voice recognition system takes user input in any language for mobile money transactions. During registration, you are given the opportunity to say anything in any language which you think you can remember. This is going to, be, this is going to stand for your password. The password and the voice are going to be stored in the voice recognition system and will be required of you to use any time you want to do any mobile money transaction. Also, the second segment of my, um, my idea is the fingerprint system. Someone can do mobile money transactions. I can mimic my mommy's voice and do mobile money transactions, and it won't be noticed. So after saying your password, you'll be given the opportunity to use any two fingers which you think you are OK with. The first finger is for confirmation that you are really the one who cashed out the money from your own mobile money accounts. Also, the second finger is what I call emergency fingerprint. This emergency fingerprint will only be required when you have distress. That is when you are in a situation where you are being forced to cash out money. Now, for those who don't use fingerprint phones, non-fingerprint phones, you are going to be given the opportunity to say your password from the back to the front. So this way, it will signal the telcos that there is a problem and you have been forced to cash out money. The main impact of this is to close the gap between the banked and the unbanked in society and help in achieving SDG Goal 10, which talks about reducing inequalities. It will as well deepen momo penetration that allow a lot of people to easily and effortlessly purchase the momo service without having to ask for help from any unsuspecting helper who at the end of the day take advantage of them it will also decrease salami slicing salami slicing is basically the use of electronic devices to siphon money from someone's account bit by bit without the person noticing it it will increase security and help in achieving SDG Goal 16, which talks about strong institutions, peace, and justice. As well as SDG 8, which talks about economic growth and decent work. It will help in the government's drive to digitize the economy and build a cash light economy. A cash light economy, basically, is an economy where it's going to be cashless. We are going to do everything without physical money, but through electronic transactions. It will also decrease fraud in mobile money. So basically, cash, Casa Cash Systems is here to solve the problem of e-pilfering. Thank you. Thank you very much. You see how everybody got interested in this because it had to do with money. And, uh, <laughs> and we all want to be sure that our money is safe where we kept them. So I can see people say, okay, yes, this sounds like a good idea. Let me make sure that nobody sounds like me. So you have options of the voice, you have options of the fingerprint, and I think that is completely and absolutely amazing. A round of applause for her once again. Thank you. So now we'll call on, definitely not the least one, Zita Usula Zagi. So, um, I would like to excuse myself from standing behind the podium because if I do, you will not see me. So, <laughs> Good afternoon, honorable ministers, panel of judges, distinguished guests. It is about time that Ghanaians experience a transformative change in the quality of health services delivery. My name is Zita Aslazag. And I'm here to make a presentation of one of our products, which is the Patient Nurse Automatic Alert System. I am the co-founder of Automoflex Technologies. For a second, I would like us to imagine ourselves in the shoes of this patient lying here, feeling all so weak. And let's say you urgently needed the attention of a nurse, but there is no relative or friend around to help, what would you have done? We are all aware of the quality of health services delivery in Ghana, 
But what are we actually doing to change the situation? So, upon conducting a research, my partner and I came across this problem. And to solve it, we came up with the patient nurse automatic alert system, which is a wearable wristband that comes with a web application. The wristband which will be worn by patients constantly reads their vitals using sensors and automatically triggers an alert when the patient vitals exceed safe levels. The device also displays the certain details of the patient on the screen so that nurses will be able to view the location of the patient easily. Ladies and gentlemen, our device uses LoRa as the means of communication and so internet connection will not be required in order to send or receive data. With regards to data privacy and security, we have implemented encryption before storage and transmission of the data. We have also implemented authentication at the dashboard level, which is only accessible by admins. Ladies and gentlemen, we have also implemented access level to ensure that users of the system can only see enough data to help them do their work. Our target market is hospitals, and currently the cost of producing one device is 50 Ghana cities. We are selling one device at 100 Ghana cities. In the next five years, we are hoping to sell about 1,000 pieces of this device to 20 hospitals in Ghana. If we succeed, we'll be making sales of 100,000 Ghana cities, which translates to a profit of 50,000 Ghana cities. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that not only the rich should be able to afford quality health services, and so we want to provide hospitals in Ghana with affordable yet useful devices and systems to enable them to deliver quality health services to all Ghanaians. This device would help reduce the long queuing in hospitals, and it will save a lot of lives. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Zita. Thank you so much. So currently, our prototype is still on a breadboard. As you can see, this is the pulse sensor, and this is the temperature sensor. And this is the antenna of the LoRa, which is the means of communication that this device will be using. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. Oh my goodness. I think, left to me, all these girls should just go and represent Ghana. <laughs> because amazing ideas, amazing solution, relevant solution. So at this point, I'm just going to hand over to John because I need you, you all, the audience, to make our life easier here so that um, we have less to worry about, less to decide from. So over to John. Okay. Thank you. We're going to go to the voting now, um, and I'll just give you the directions. Uh, don't vote immediately, uh, because I'll do a quick run-through of the ten young ladies, who I thought were amazing. One big round of applause for them again, please. Thank you. And also, uh, I was uh, quite impressed how every single one of them addressed the Sustainable Development Goals as part of the uh, uh, presentations. Well done. Fantastic. So, firstly, don't vote straight away, but go to you, just go to slido.com, S-L-I-D-O.com, on your phones, on your devices. And you'll see a screen come up, and you just put in the event code IA, Indigo Alpha, IA 2019. And that's it. That's all you need to do, and you'll see 10 names come up. And the 10 names, starting at Abigail at the top, and Zeta at the bottom. Everybody got it? Just give me a yes that it's come up on your phones. Yep, great stuff. So I'm going to do, don't start voting now. All you do is tick five, uh, no order of preference, and these, the five that you tick will be uh, uh, the, 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 the voting mechanism will then choose the five finalists, and we'll show that on live on the screen. So just a quick reminder, we had Abigail, Abigail York, 
who had the light bulb as the alert uh, for pests uh, and the application of insecticides. We had Angela Agbeke, who had her digital liter literacy solution, uh, particularly for teaching women ICT tools. Then we had Audrey Boteng, who had her crop app, uh, which was uh, for farm produce marketing, matching uh, supply and demand uh, with, uh, with the production. Then we had Frida, Frida Adu Amankwa. Uh, Frida had her health stats app. She particularly focused on allergies and uh, her healthcare app, for, uh, which also incorporated medical uh, artificial intelligence. Then we had Molly Essie Sutherland, Molly, uh, she had Pregta, which was her pregnancy diary application, uh, a wonderful application for the pregnancy monitoring. Then we had Najilou Dramundu, Atta Abdul Karim. Uh, Najilou, she uh, had uh, Sinplex or Cineplex, which uh, for, particularly for the Ghanaian film industry was the application for uh, uh, paid for, pay as you go effectively, pay as you use for film streaming. Then we had Precious Apire. Uh, Precious had Terminal 3, was her application, uh, for uh, use of the bus system and overcoming congestion. Then we had Rebecca Gablezu. Uh, Rebecca had uh, Find Rapidly. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the a solution of overcoming wrong handy men. Uh, I shouldn't have any bias, but <laughs> it's a real problem. Uh, wrong hand, getting over having wrong handy men come to your house. And she uses AI data analytics on that. Uh, then we had Selassie Ama, Ama Domikwanu. Selassie, she had her, her uh, money pilfering app, which is using voice recognition, even fingerprint solutions for, to stop electronic pro pilfering uh, mobile money. And then finally, we had Zeta. Zeta Ursula Sage had Automoflex, uh, which is her health service, a wristband, which reads your vital signs uh, to um, trigger alerts. Uh, it comes under the name PNAAS. That is your 10 young ladies, and we'll just give it a few minutes. Uh, ben, can we go live on the, on the screen? And you can start voting. Vote for five. You can only